We do have breaking news in Mexico. The country's leftist presidential candidate, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, sometimes called AMLO, riding a populist wave to become the country's next president. CNN's Leila Santiago is live in Mexico City with more What a Night, Leila. Tell us what's happening there. Well, Allison, what really has uh, been made clear by voters is that they're looking for someone to tackle corruption and violence in Mexico. That was made very clear by the choice of, of AMLO. That was his, his platform. But also what's very clear is that this could be a big change in the U.S. and Mexico relationship. I mean, last night when he spoke of the U.S., he says he wants friendship and cooperation um, in development. He, he wants new Mutual respect between the two countries. President Trump also making a statement. He took to Twitter saying, hey, looking forward to working with you. But there are some pretty big issues to tackle here. Immigration. I mean, AMLO wrote a book called Oye Trump. That means listen Trump, in which he really spoke out against this idea of El Muro, Trump's wall, saying that is not a solution to anything. And then and then you have NAFTA, that free trade agreement that has been going back and forth for months now. And initially, AMLO was very critical of that. And, and he sort of softened his tone with some pressure of the business leaders here throughout the campaign. But he is much like Trump in saying this is not the best deal for my country. I want a better deal. And, and, and he is saying Mexico first. A lot of analysts have said that this is Mexico's Trump. So it'll be interesting to see the dynamic change in this relationship and where it'll go from here. All right, Lela Santiago for us in Mexico City. Joining us now, our chief international correspondent, Christian Amanpour. And Christian, this was a landslide victory. We can talk about what it means for Mexico. But if you look at this from a bigger picture, whether it's from the left or the right, around the world for the last 12 months, we really have seen the upending in some ways of the entire world order. No, you're absolutely right. In fact, for more than two years now, it started with Brexit here and traveled to the United States with Trump. And now it's in Latin America. It's not just Mexico. It's Colombia's recent election. And it's obviously in Europe as well. So, yes, this is a big sort of seismic shift. The real question, the real question is whether these populists or nationalists, whatever you call them, can actually deliver the promises that they have made. And in the case of AMLO, using his acronym, it's a long, long name, he obviously breaks with decades of tradition. The two main parties are out of the picture for the moment, and he is a leftist leader for the first time in decades in Mexico. He has a coalition that's somewhat unwieldy of, of very far-right conservatives, of very sort of left-wing unions, of religious groups as well. And he's promised big, big promises, like taking on corruption, which is incredibly important, vital for people's daily life and for business and the health of the country, uh, tackling the violence, which is endemic and constant constant, and of course the poverty that springs up in many pockets of Mexico. But there is no set plan or nothing that we know about how he's going to pay for all of this. And on the other hand, as Leila was talking about, he's going to have to figure out how to thread that needle in his relationship with Donald Trump's America and with President Trump himself. Because yes, the president sent out a nice tweet, but he has to really sort of straddle the line. How do you stand up for Mexico, refuse the wall, refuse to pay for the wall, don't look like Donald Trump's puppet uh, uh, or lapdog, and, and at the same time, don't so antagonize your big neighbor to the north that it backfires on you. So a huge amount of, of balancing act and no clear design as at the moment of how they're going to do it. But this is replicated now, Canada, Europe, all over the place. People are trying to figure out how to deal with this massive disruption and dislocation that's happening now in many parts of the world.